Hi guys, John here from Titan and today I want to share with you the five common mistakes in dieting. So if you want to lose weight, this is five common mistakes that I see a lot and I want to bring them up to you guys so you guys can either change these mistakes if you're making them or you guys are educated and you guys can use this and implement it for yourself. So let's go through these five different things that I've outlined here for you guys. The first one is eating too many calories or eating too less of calories. So let's talk about this. When you want to lose weight, you want to go into a calorie deficit. And there's been a myth out there, calories are calories, calories in, calories out. This is untrue. The myth is this. The calories from eating a chocolate cake or the calories from eating a grilled chicken breast are different. Even if the number of calories going into the body are the same. Remember that. There's good calories and bad calories. Now, eating too much of calories is obviously you're going to put too many calories in the body and that's going to store as fat, which is not the effect that you want. If you're eating too less of calories, the body can go into a catabolic effect and you can cause other issues with your health if you're eating too less of calories. So this is one mistake that I see a lot with a lot of different people out there in talking about calories and eating too many calories or too less of calories. So you gotta find your sweet spot, all right? Two, not exercising or exercising too much. So people go out there and they think that they're gonna be able to get on some of these fad diets or programs out there and not have to exercise, okay? Or they think that they're going to exercise all day and all night. So let's talk about these problems on both ends. The first one, not exercising. Okay, your body needs to be active. We burn calories being active and using energy. Exercising, we know that more lean body mass that you have, the more muscle, the more fat you're going to burn. And you're going to stay leaner that way, your lean body mass, okay? So the next thing is over-exercising, all right? I don't see a lot of people out there really over-exercising. I think people really, uh, they hype that up as far as that say, like they go five times a week, I'm, I'm over-exercising. Well, over-exercising is, is not giving your body proper rest time to recover from the workout or the strain or stress that you put on it, possibly the day previous. So that's why a lot of people that are educated about working out know that they have to give their body parts a day rest in between working them out. The reason why, we're breaking down muscle fibers. We're breaking down the muscle because we want it to build up stronger. That's gonna happen in the recovery process. So, exercise is vital and key. Over-exercising, not good for your health and not good for the body, all right? Let's move on to three. Choosing low-fat or diet foods. So we see a lot of these low fat processed foods out there and we see these diet foods out there. Keto bar, this, that, whatever. Now people think this is a health food. This is the diet food. This is going to help me lose weight. Now, I'm not saying that some of them might not help, but I'm saying that most of them out there that I've seen, if you look on the back and the ingredients, they're compensating for taste with a lot of sugar or other ingredients. They're gonna have an opposite effect for what you're trying to accomplish with weight loss, okay? That is a big problem out there because people usually always tend to look at the front and the marketing plan and the scheme and they don't look on the ingredients of what's actually in the food. Know what you're eating. Get unprocessed food if you can. If you can get apples, right, that came off a tree, you want that instead of a processed apple sauce per se. All right, these are differences you guys gotta look for out there. The less processed, the better it is for your body. So look at that. Diet foods, don't believe all the hype. Make sure you look at the ingredients and make sure serving sizes line up to what you're going to intake, all right? Four, overestimating how many calories you burn during a day or exercising. I see some people come up with these exuberant amount of calories they burned in the 30 minute session in the gym. Guys, we have to be realistic about the calories that we are burning. Educate yourselves, know exactly how many calories. There are some good tools out there that will help you count the calories that you are burning. 
Now these could be off a little bit, okay? So just take that in consideration. And I would rather underestimate than overestimate. And we did talk about, you know, eating enough too. So make sure you're at least hitting that guideline or standard or goal that you want, right? Um, and usually it's 2,000 to 2,500 for the average person is what nutritional diet out there calls for. Now, some people are different and this is where you are going to have to cater to what your body needs, right? And if you need a nutritionist or a dietitian, you can search those out as well, all right? Educate yourself. Five, having unrealistic, right, <laughs> goals or expectations that you're gonna hit. Don't do that. Also going along with this, educating yourself. I brought that up in the last one, but I believe this is the exact same thing here. The reason is this. Don't set an unrealistic expectation. You're 100 pounds overweight, um, you've never exercised in your life, and you're giving yourself 60 days to be beach ready. You're gonna be a six pack, 10% body fat, you're gonna be able to exercise in all these programs, you know all this different equipment in the gym. That may not be true. So that's an unrealistic goal. You're setting, the, you're setting yourself up for failure, which in the end might cause you know, a, a beat in your confidence level. It might cause a little bit of depression because you didn't hit that goal. Why can't I hit this goal? Set realistic expectations. Those little goals that you hit will lead up into a long-term result. And that's what you're ultimately here for. You're here for the marathon, not the quick 10-second race, okay? So make sure that you guys are doing this. Educate yourself. And what I mean by educating yourself with realistic goals, go to a medical provider that deals with something like this or a trainer or somebody that has the background, certifications, and the knowledge that can help you set these realistic goals that you're trying to hit. If you can't afford them and you're on a budget, set yourself realistic goals that you can hit. Don't set little tiny, teeny goals. Don't say, I'm gonna do two push-ups today. I'm gonna do two push-ups the next day. All right, we know you can hit that goal. Something that's going to challenge your body, but you're not trying to strain your body or overdo it per se, right? I see some guys go in the gym and you know, instead of lifting you know, the 45 pounds they can do, they wanna lift 200 pounds, right? They wanna go straight to 200 pounds. You have to work your way up. It's all about progression. Progression is key. That's anything in life, especially getting to your weight loss goal and getting to that transformation that we want you to get to. So I hope these tips have helped you guys and will educate you guys and you guys can implement this in your daily lifestyle, workout regimens. If you have any more questions or concerns, you guys can always call or text us 727-389-3220. DM us and let us know if you have any questions or tips. I appreciate you guys. I'm John from Titan. We'll see you later.